Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to our live sketch plugin demo session. Uh, let's wait a few minutes as people uh, join. Uh, if you want, you can leave your, your name and where you're uh, connecting from in the chat so we can get some conversation going. You want this to be interactive. And uh, we'll start in just a few moments. So let's wait just a few minutes. We already have some questions. All right, people are getting in. Let's just wait a, one more minute and uh, we'll start the, the session. All right, let's get, uh, let's get started. Um, hello everyone again, um, and welcome again to this uh, live demo session where we will be showing you how localized plugin for Sketch works and most importantly, how it can help you improve your localization workflows by closing the gap between your designers, your translators, your developers, and your content owners. Um, but before we start, just a couple of things. If you want to participate in the conversation, you can you can leave a comment in the chat. But if you want uh, to see a question answered by Nicholas, please send it in the question section. Um, for, the, for those of you that are interested in design stage localization uh, and in design plugins, but you use Figma, we will be hosting a live session focused on localized plugin for Figma on the 26th of October. So you can register in the same page um, where you registered for this webinar. Uh, and we'll actually, yeah, we'll drop a, a link uh, in the chat so you can do that uh, if, you are, if you are interested. Um, so we can uh, actually move to, to introductions. My name is Miguel Caetano. Uh, I work in product marketing here at Localize and uh, I'm joining you from Lisbon, Portugal. Uh, I'll be your host uh, today. And joining us, is, we have uh, Nicholas uh, Heisinger, who who helps, who works with our customers to help them take the full advantage of of localize, of localize. And um, and uh, yeah, I could also actually present him as uh, our design stage expert, as he has uh, been uh, implementing these workflows and working with these plugins for quite a while. Nicholas, do you want to to say a few words? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. It's quite humbling, actually, the, the presentation. I learned from the customers, but yeah, we listen to the customers and that's how we find the ideal solution for them. Thanks, Miguel. All right. All right. So just one last thing uh, before, um, uh, just one last uh, note for, for people that uh, uh, are not completely aware of uh, who, we are, who we are and what we do at Localize. And I'm sorry for the ones who do. Um, localizes an end-to-end -end, uh, translation and localization platform uh, that was built uh, to help companies grow globally by delivering localized customer experiences. And we do that by providing a platform that can help you manage the process of localizing your apps, your websites, your software, 
uh, or your digital assets from marketing materials to customer service, knowledge bases, for example. You can do that, all of that in, in one single place. And to ensure that we, uh, to ensure that you do this in the most uh, efficient way possible, uh, Localize has created the collaboration and project management tools that you need to bring all of these teams uh, together, you know, from developers, designers, translators, managers, you name it. You have CAT tools and, um, and productivity features for translators. You can automate uh, lots of things within, within our platform, you can order translations. Um, we have a very uh, strong and unpionated un 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 uh, API, sorry, uh, really hard word to pronounce, that you know, helps you customize your automations and integrations. And we also have built a strong list of, of a strong and big list of integrations and connectors with several tools. And, and this obviously helps you bring together again, the teams that are involved in localization. And so today uh, we are going to talk about one of those integrations, our sketch uh, plugin and how that can help you uh, streamline, um, how, that, how that can help you integrate localization uh, in your development process. So in contrast to the traditional localization flow, where localization and where translation was happening post-development, what we have seen our customers uh, using this plugin for is start translations at the beginning, start at the design stage. So while you are building the designs, uh, you are iterating with different translations and you can actually detect and adapt your designs to the translations. And so in that matter, in that sense, you are identifying uh, possible errors that uh, would cost you actually 10 times more according to, to studies if you had to resolve them after uh, the product is actually uh, delivered. But I don't want to, um, I don't want to uh, bother you uh, a lot with, with, with the theory of it. I think uh, Nicholas will show you um, how, this, how this can work with our Sketch plugin. Uh, and yeah, we did uh, a webinar a couple of uh, weeks ago with, with Sketch where we go through this. So if you are interested, you can revisit uh, by visiting our YouTube channel. So Nicholas, please um, take, it, take it away. Okay, let me share my screen. Oh, um, so this time I'm working only with one screen. Please bear with me. So let's start off with localize.com, right? I just want to show you that I have set up a project. So if you log into localize.com, you have the projects dashboard. And for this demonstration purpose, I've just created a, a blank project. I've set up some target languages. Uh, so I have German and Finnish that are known to expand quite a bit, right? I have French, Latin language, and I have Russian for the Cyrillic alphabet, just to show a full scope of different languages and how it can relate to the design. So let's navigate into that project just to see that it's perfectly blank. There is no keys, there's no string values, there's nothing here. And from now we can go to Sketch actually, where I've set myself up. So here you have the Sketch Localize plugin and we can look at the settings. I'm already connected to that project, which is called Design Stage Localization. Just as a reminder, you can see the title here, Design Stage Localization, uh, top left. And I'll cancel this. So there's actually a lot to discuss, but for the, the reality of this demonstration purpose, let's just stick to how are we going to push content from the design, so from Sketch into Localize, right? And we'll navigate to the push button right here. So first options, let's try to, to go not too slow, not too fast, but uh, first option is if I'm connecting to an existing project, which already has string values and keys, um, instead of having to manually link all of these, I could have the plugin perform a scan between the string values in my design and the string values that already exist in my project, right? And if it's a match, it'll automatically link them for you. Now, as you just saw, my project is completely empty. So this is not very helpful for me at this stage. Although having it on wouldn't change anything either. Now, in the event that um, there is no match, then the second option is important. So create missing keys and localize. So this is what I need uh, right now to make sure that I'm pushing uh, all these missing strings that do not exist as a key value, a key identifier. And my second option is 
link, oh, third option, sorry, link new duplicate text to a single localized key. So in my design, I may have several times strings like sign up, confirm, press here, um, where in reality, behind the scene in your product, you may not really have a need for different key identifiers. And actually better than that, it might be uh, more consistent to make sure that you only have one string value to translate uh, in localize itself. Now, of course, there are some edge case scenarios where, for example, in French, you know, you have plural, uh, plurals, you have uh, genders. That might mean that the same term or string value in English will be completely different depending on the context in a different language. So that's why there's that flexibility where you can manage this at this stage. Um, fourth option, I have tags. So if you have a deeper dive into localize, you'll realize that you'll need to use tags for key management purposes. Um, I won't di uh, deep dive into that right now, so I'll keep it off. Then update localized translations with modified text. So in the event that we already have uh, keys and string values and everything's connected in localize and sketch, and uh, I have a UX writer or my designer decides to change the values at the string value here, well, that's perfectly fine. They can type up the new text and push and update then localize to the latest um, base language or latest translation values. So if that's what you want to achieve, you'd need to have this on. Then we have update screenshots. Um, it's update or generate screenshots. So I have no screenshots at this stage in localize. So I will be pushing screenshots from my design. And this is how, at a, at a design stage, you can really support the whole uh, localization effort to have qualified translations uh, by offering visual context to your translators. I'll show you in a second how this looks. And for now, I'll just skip push hidden elements. Press confirm. If everything goes well, then we'll get a results page at the end that will show us how many keys were created, how many were linked. So if you remember the duplicate, uh, duplicate option, so link duplicate translations into one localized key, this will explain why I have 31 keys linked. So I have 31 different uh, translation values here that are linked to a localized key. However, I've only created 25 localized keys. That discrepancy is because I'm avoiding duplicates. And we see that we have um, four screenshots generated. Now let's travel back to localize, see how this looks. I'll refresh the page here. Now you see that I have key names generated from the plugin itself. So no more manual key, uh, key name uh, generation. You have the context in those key names if you've set up uh, your design properly. Um, more than that, you have the screenshots straight away. So this is, again, huge value for your translators. This is how you provide value to the translators so that they can you know, give you qualified uh, translations from the start. They have the visual context by pressing on it. Our OCR uh, system has scanned the image, found the text value that's represented by the, one second, by the base value here. So this is just huge uh, value added. Uh, I don't know how many of you have been requested to you know, generate screenshots to support your LSP and how much of a manual process that can be. Well, press of a button that's done, it's in localize. No, uh, you don't need to worry about it anymore. Now. There is something that I did set up in, in this project that we will not deep dive either, it's automations. And this is why you're seeing that I have values for Finnish, French, German, Russian, press of a button, they're there. This is actually uh, values from Google Translate um, and it's part of automations. It's something that works very nicely with our design plugins. And if you're interested in automations, uh, maybe Miguel, uh, you can post, uh, the link to the documentations for the, the automations. Now let's travel back to sketch from here. I'll just close this page. And so now I've pushed everything to localize and I have translated values. Where's the added value for me as a designer, right? So let's check it now. So I have a perfect design for English and how does it look in Finnish? Another question, how many of you guys have to manually copy paste from a spreadsheet um, because somebody requested a translated mock-up or because you're performing a localization test early 
um, but you still need to do it manually somehow. So here we go, everything's updated and we can scroll down and immediately realize that, yeah, I need to adapt my design for finish. This language is just gonna expand so much. My design is not ready right here, right? Uh, more than that, I could go and, and check Russian. How's, uh, how's my font, my selected font, will it work well with Cyrillic alphabet? There we go. And I could do this for any of the languages that I've added in my project at this stage. Now I'll go back into English and now that I've shown you how you can adapt your design, actually, if we consider and step back a bit, so let's say the plugin generates the key names, right? Something that's either done by product owners, product managers, uh, traditionally, or, and so they have very good um, context on where those key names are reflected. They probably give the, them a name with enough context for them to realize where that should go. Now, if it's, performed by the plugin, they're losing a bit of that uh, ownership and a bit of the context. So to support this technical handover to the, develop, uh, to the developers, Localize then developed the duplicate functionality, which is right here. If we travel behind it, there are two options. We'll start with the first one, which is key names. Create a page with key names. Let's see what that looks like. Um, now, please pay attention to the left, um, to the top and to the left. There's uh, pages right here. And I press create. You see that there's a second page created right there. It's what we call a duplicate page with key names. I see how it looks. Oh, wow. Always need to travel back here. So here we go. We have the full wireframing, the full user journey with the key names in the product or you know in the design instead of the text value. Because ideally in a localization process, um, your developers shouldn't worry about the text value. They should be decoupled from the localization process to the extent that they should trust that the translations that they receive are, are of high quality and will not break the product, right? So QA checked. Um, so here's an example of how you can share this. You could export it in PDF if you prefer, or well, in, in Sketch, you know, you have uh, some supporting tools like Zeppelin, um, so that's just an example of how you could provide it to your developers and receive a technical feedback loop as well. So they receive it. And before they go on into development, they can tell you, well, maybe this won't work or we should try it a different way. And you're collaborating at this stage between you know, um, expertises that are usually very siloed in their work and only collaborate when the users complain, basically. Now, you'll also notice that this is in view only mode, right? The, the purpose here is you may not always want to have uh, people who are not trained into your design tool uh, playing around with your design. They could break the design. So that's why we have this only in view only mode. And the master copy, you can always travel back here, is right here. Now, if anything changes with the, with the design, it's perfectly fine because you can travel back to the duplicate um, uh, the duplicate options and select the duplicate page you already created. And you can update it with the latest changes. So it's not completely static, it's not completely dynamic, but you have a method to update those copied pages, which I think is great. Um, now, there's another option for uh, the duplicate pages, which is, uh, let's go back here, create a new page. We'll create a page with languages. Now you can do exactly the same thing just with translation. So a duplicate page that you could share for marketing purposes. You know, there's, you have a marketing team in a local country. You can press of a button, generate those translated uh, mockups and share it with them. Um, another great use case, bear with me here. I'll just select all languages. That's something very nice on the sketch plugin. Press create. Uh, you can see that it's working right here, right? And we'll close. So uh, we have five extra pages created. I'll press close. So another use case is I have my app store in Russia. So I want my Russian users, for example, when they log into the app store and they're reading about my product, my app, maybe I want them to have those screenshots, the visual context in Russian instead of just English. Um, I think... Those are really good use cases. Another one that came up recently is, let's say you have a white label product 
and you need to close uh, white label deals with another company. Well, your designers could set up the full mockup. And if for that company, it's only specific target languages, well, you could already have all of those mockups translated when, when showing it to them as a sales pitch. So something that came up recently that, that's uh, very powerful to use, I believe. And why not use it for local UX research as well? Okay, Miguel? Yes, you may continue, Nikos. You may continue. I may continue. I think I've presented everything about. Ah, okay, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. perfect. Yeah, I think that was uh, quite insightful, uh, Nikos. By the way, uh, can you um, describe uh, how our uh, customers are taking advantages of this design? So, of this uh, design localization in our plugin. So it's it's obvious that it takes a lot of. Um, workload from developers it's obviously it obviously um, brings a, a lot a lot more seamless uh, workflow to to localization but I was wondering if you have some numbers that you can share with some of the customers that you have worked with right well I think the most hard-hitting numbers and it's, it's always great when you have a customer who measures uh, you know their uh, their workload before using localize when using localized and when localized does an improvement. And, and that's what Wizings did, right, uh, Romain, where um, well, he had measured a certain amount of time to manage and release a product or a new feature for the, the Wizings Healthmade app. And by implementing just localize, simply localize, as it was uh, with the Figma plugin at the time, that was a 50% reduction in workload for a product manager, right? And that, that's huge. And when, when uh, we released uh, the duplicate functionality originally on the, the Figma plugin, which you just saw on, on Sketch, that was decreased from the initial number to 90%. So just a couple of seconds, you got, the, uh, you got all the information you need for a technical handoff for your developers. And from a product management perspective, that's just awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think those numbers, I think illustrate quite well. Uh, the impact that uh, these uh, plugins can actually have. Well, uh, we have some questions, so let's let's maybe go through through some of the the questions that uh, some of you have uh, shared. Let's start with uh, this one from uh, Martin. Um, so the question is: Are there plans to move the sketch plugin to the essential plan, or have a different pricing model for certain seats or users? Um, I can take this one. I, I I believe there's no initiative right now to change the, the pricing model, but I would advise if you are a, a localized customer to talk to, with your CSM. I'm sure he can uh, help you uh, actually right. answer this uh, this question. I think, uh, you know, if they want to maybe have access to a specific feature, give it a test run for one week, make sure that they find value. Uh, our CSMs are more than happy to, and, and you know, any localized representative is more than happy to make sure that they have value in the tool before they buy in. So, exactly. All right, so let's go to the next question, and I'm taking the most upvoted one. So, if you like one of the questions in the question section, please vote. Um, so, this question is from uh, Alon. So how I work when the keys do not fit my expectations? Only change it in the design tool or can I somehow sync the key also back? Nicholas, do you want to take this one? Yeah, I'd love to reconnect with me, uh, with uh, Alain after this call or if I could get more context because are we talking about the key identifier? Are we talking about the string value? Uh, I would need more context to, to answer this uh, properly, but I'm happy to reconnect offline or on a call and figure okay. it out. Okay, sounds good. Alain, please uh, contact us. We will definitely answer your question. Um, so we have here one of, from Irene that asks, are the screenshots taken automatically? I think you answered this one already, right, Nicholas? Yeah, not, not only are they pushed automatically, if you have that option on, you can update the same screenshot. So let's say the design wording has changed, then you'll push and update those screenshots. The wording in the screenshots will also be reflected. So very powerful. All right. All right. Let's do one more from Alan as well. What, uh, what's happening if I import all keys into localize and I change the key in localize 
and then I change the text in Sketch. I assume it will not update the text in Localize, right? Uh, let me break this down. So what's happening if I import all keys into Localize, right? So you push the keys into Localize and I change the key in Localize. But again, is it a key identifier or is it you change the text in Sketch? Because basically, once you've pushed and you have a link with the keys in Localize, the key identifier, the key name, the source of truth is in Localize, right? Um, so, and then if you change the text in Localize and pull that change into Sketch, that's perfectly fine. And if you change the text in Sketch, the text, not the key identifier, and push that, that will update in Localize. So you're playing with sources of truth, something to be you know, aware of when building your workflow. But uh, again, we need more context on is key, the key identifier here, are we on the same page? Let me check. It's about the key identifier. This is Ella uh, trying to. Okay, right. So the key identifier, let's say you're not happy with the key naming, the key identifier push from the key name generator, right? Uh, you can edit them after the fact in Localize. But here we're assuming that your developers have not already implemented those key identifiers into the code because that would be a refactoring. Uh, so if you're very much at the initial stage, you can go and change the, the key names. Also, um, by the way, if you are if you cannot work with the key naming conventions offered by the key naming generator, a lot of key names there, um, you can select do not generate key name, right? And you would then be forced to manually input uh, your custom key name and work with those from the start. All right. So let's take. Uh, let's try to take uh, one or two more. One second. This is from Maria. Can you choose to push pull text for one design only? Sure, sure. Um, here, I guess there wasn't enough time. But if you jump on on, on one of our you know uh, product demonstration calls that's targeted, then you can actually select a specific frame, multiple frames, or only one key. And then the, the options of the plugin are targeted for that specific key. So you're not forced to work with the whole design all the time. Um, I, I should have focused on that. I'm, I'm sorry if I overlooked that aspect. All right, perfect. OK, uh, let's do just one, uh, just one more um, from Maria. Uh, there's problems for developers to find the position on duplicate key, keys. We have to review manually and adjust manually so the code is a bit more clean. Is there a way to export the keys for code with all the information so the code is complete even if we have duplicate keys? I think, well, that doesn't sound like a design specific problem. I think that's further down the line, but localize out, out of the box itself offer, offers a duplicate finder. So based on the base language uh, values being equal, you have a duplicate finder that will, sh that will show you all the duplicate keys that you have and give you an option to either merge uh, if they're part of different platforms or link them. Uh, but yeah, re reach out to your reps and, and talk about uh, these kind of problems. We, we may be able to help. Perfect. Um, all right, I don't want to take... Uh... The whole afternoon, I know this topic is uh, quite uh, popular. Let's yeah. just try to get, uh, all right. I don't, I'm not sure if you can answer this one, Nicholas, but interested in an RTL script for sketch integration to localization. I'm not sure. RTL, so right to left, I suppose. There's another one that's, um, that's similar. So out of the box, sorry for my voice at this point, but uh, out of the box, it, it's not a localized, um, Question, localized reports, Arabic, no problem, or RTL. Um, so Sketch, from my tests, uh, like renders very well um, Arabic, Persian, Hebrew. Uh, however, there, there is a known limitation on, on the Figma side, um, which hopefully will be fixed. But there are some workarounds. Uh, you can find it also on our Figma documentation page if you're watching that. But yeah, th there should be no limitations on Sketch as far as my test go. All right. Um, okay, last one because it's an easy one. Do you offer general training uh, trainings for localized? Well, I can answer that one. You on YouTube, you can find um, some demo sessions, a getting started uh, demo also for localized, 
And if you reach out to us, we can definitely uh, hear about your uh, specific uh, case and we can uh, show you how localized uh, might be able to to help. So please uh, reach out to us, Irene. I'm sure we could uh, we can find the, um, we can find a solution for you. All right, with this one, I will I will uh, end the session. I think it was uh, quite productive. I hope it was useful for you to understand what you can do with the sketch plugin and also that this is actually useful for your use cases. For some questions that might not have been answered, we'll uh, answer offline. Um, please connect with us on LinkedIn. Um, go to our website if you have doubts, use chat, use uh, request to them, or we will definitely um, help you out with, with whatever is your problem in localization. So thank you very much. Thank you, Nicholas. Yeah, Nicholas, go ahead. One more thing, just thinking that since we're doing Figma as well, so if there's something that we skip, skimmed through, went a bit too fast, let us know the feedback. If there's enough popular opinion, we'll you know include it in our Figma demonstration as well. So. Yeah, yeah. And, and by the way, just another note, um, we have a complete guide to to look to design stage localization, and you know a checklist that you can use to if you are into implementing this this new workflow. And so if you are interested, go to, to resources and uh, you can find all that, uh, all that, uh, all that information over there. And uh, we think it's very useful. It's, it has uh, had um, quite good feedback. So go ahead and download it. It's free. So yeah, hope we can, we can help. All right. Thank you, Nicholas, so much uh, for the demo. And I'll see you all very soon. Take care. Thank you, Miguel.